Yeah, I'd say we're going to restart the class over here on the infield side. So no official distance on our light limited modifieds over on the grandstand side. Beautiful John Deere being spotted in the sled there by his father, Scott Whitworth. This will be Colton Whitworth from Unionville, Missouri, a third generation the poor. Grandpa Jr. Whitworth made many trips down the track. This tractor here was a qualifier for the National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville. Last time we were able to pull in Louisville, obviously Louisville got canceled this year in February. But last time we pulled there in uh, February of 2020, this would have been one of the tractors you would have saw there at Freedom Hall. He will be our option puller. Colton Whitworth. All right, the MK Yield Express out of Unionville, Missouri. Colton Whitworth. Well, just the opposite happened on that track. Could not get a hold of it. Couldn't get a hold of the track. Put back on the throttle. He's the first puller. He also did stop before the 100 foot mark. First puller has the option of keeping their pass or dropping and coming back, but every puller has that option if they did, don't get past the 100 foot mark. And you can see Colton immediately, he's pointing down, he's pointing that he was going to drop. Yeah, the thumb was up in the air, he was definitely, the thumb was pointing down immediately upon stopping. All right, next four, light modified tractors. Next four will be Adam Kayser. This class, very unique. This light modified class, these tractors weigh in at 6,000 pounds. Some interesting combinations. We just saw twin turbine come out and hook. Now, the sled has been reset. The sled has been reset. Blake Ott, the foreign affairs machine, made it look way too easy. We like to see tractors get out the gate, make a full pull. We, we can't have all of them making a full pull and having a pull off. So we'll see Blake Ott back here once again in a few tractors. So he'll make his second attempt on a different sled setting. So the next pull, he will actually be the first puller in the class now with this new, set, new sled setting, Adam Kayser from Pender, Nebraska, crushing it. Single, 540 cubic inch, big block Chevrolet, and a single turbocharger. I think it was like 5.4 some odd inches. I heard in a conversation last night. So, pretty good turbocharger sitting on top of that big block Chevy. What's really cool about this class, and I know you touched on it, is the number of different power plants that you got over here. You know, you got the Hemis, you got the Born Chevys, you got the Turbines, you got the Allison Air Yes. Yeah, yeah, there's so many different combinations in this class. And who doesn't love the sound of that V-12 Allison aircraft? <laughs> Adam Kayser, got to get lined up, squared up with that sled. So I think what we're going to do on the grandstand side, Ron, I think we are going to make a sled adjustment and also a class adjustment instead of having our... 
super stock class, I think we're going to go right into our 9,500-pound limited pros, our 401 class, I believe. And Colin Lear, the dairy and beer from Reedstown, Wisconsin, will be our first four over there. Here we go, Adam Pays, who's been to Nebraska. Single big block, Chevrolet, calls it, crushing it. Doggone it, can't keep it lit. Now, he did not break the 100 foot mark. I think that's a new setup on that tractor for 2021. Hopefully, hopefully, it's something that they can adjust and bring that tractor back here. As I said, he started to go to pull it back and then give him a shot right now. not going to get it down the track here tonight. Uh, that combination is not working for him. Back to the drawing board for Adam Kayser. Give a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. There's only one realistic place where you can test a pulling tractor, and that's out here on the track in competition. Give Adam Kayser a round of applause. Tough sledding for him here tonight in debut. All right, over on the grandstand side, as I mentioned, we are going to switch classes. We're going to put the unlimited super stocks either a second class or a third class of the night over there on the grandstand side. And we're going to bring in our limited pro stop class. First four, Colin Lear, the Darien Deer out of Reedstown, Wisconsin. He will be our option four. Now, folks, folks in the, in the grandstands here, we all the folks at home, some may be asking why are we switching the class. We saw one unloaded super stop try to get down the track, couldn't get a hold of it. That class is lighter. It's about 6,200 pounds, has a lot more wheel speed. The track just isn't there yet. This mist that's been plaguing us here right at the start time makes that track super, super slick. Now, these tractors coming up in the 9,500-pound limited pro stock class, yeah, 9,500 pounds, not near as much wheel speed. So we feel like those tractors can get a hold of the track over there, and we'll bring those unlimited supers back a little bit later here. Now, quite often you hear this class referred to as the 401 class, and you may wonder why did they call it the 401 class. That's basically the size of the turbocharger. 4.1 inches on the inlet side, 4.5 on the outlet side. These are all ag chassis, no component tractors in this class. As Ron mentioned, they weigh 9,500 pounds, 640 cubic inches. All right, we need to talk about this tractor here, Gage Ott. We saw his brother Blake go down the track. Here he was the first puller in the class with a twin turbo. This is Blake's younger brother, Gage. All 
All right, that's how we start our 401 class, our limited pro stop class. He is our option puller. Now, in the outlaws, we can e they can either take that hook, come back immediately, or, or come back, back in the sixth six. position. That's correct. So the option to drop to the bottom of the class is, is not available in the outlaw organization. Right? Gage Ott, out of Northrop, Nebraska, V-12, Allison Aircraft Engine. This engine The Beer Kyle makes some noise, Gage Ott. 1710 cubic inch V12 Allison aircraft engine. Designed in the 1930s, used in P-51 Mustangs in World War II, out here making horsepower and winning tractor pulls in 2021. All right, they tell us that Colin Lear, our option puller on the grandstand side, exercised his option, so he will drop. So no official distance. Mike Gerlach, the G-Force out of Stockton, Illinois. You know, I had a feeling Mr. Lear would do that. I just had this gut feeling that... Uh, All right, out on the sled, grandstand side, comes to us from Stockton, Illinois, the G-Force, the International, Mike Gerlach, no official distance on our limited pro stocks. Once again, in the 401 class, they run 24-5, 32-track uh, tires, 9,500-pound maximum weight. No power plants larger than 640 cubic inches. No intercoolers, no aftercoolers, and they are all ag rear ends. No component chassis in this class. Mike Gerlach has the chain rolled tight, waiting for the track equipment to clear. Norfolk, Nebraska. What you're looking at are six liter LS motors. These motors came in three quarter ton and one ton Chevy pickups. Twin turbochargers on each engine. <coughs> Calls it double overtime. Lead distance is 405.77 feet. Gage Ott, Warhawk is leading it.
Things were getting real hot on that left front motor, that left turbo. Ron Stone. Hey, what's going on tonight? Good to see you again, buddy. How was life? Uh, busy today. I busy. Well, we're live. You came to me and said, Jason, let's wrap, let's wrap these babies up. And so we're going to try to do a weekly show. I don't know if you're going to pick Tuesdays or Wednesdays, Ron. You're a busy guy, but I'm going to help you any way I can. We're live right now on um, YouTube, Beer Money Pulling Team, the Outlaw Truck and Tractor Pulling Page, and a few other pages as well, Ron, just general pulling pages that I'm a part of or I help admin or whatever. So um, I kind of, you know, the vision is, Ron, here to wrap up the previous week event on the Outlaw Circuit and then talk about upcoming events as well. And then possibly, I think you are, are one of our special guests tonight is Charlie Miller, right, Foxy Lady? Yeah, we're going to bring Charlie Miller on, winner of the Mod Four Wheel Drive class on Saturday night in Dubuque. Talk to him a little bit. Um, maybe next week we'll reach out to uh, folks from uh, Ravenna, Nebraska, our next event coming up uh, in a couple of weeks. Try to get Tim on here, or maybe one of the other fellows from from Ravenna. That two day event coming up. Are those certain pullers, Ron, that that are involved with that event out there, or is it a is it a group of people, or is it you know like a lot of times a town will have a puller. Or a puller's family will, you know, live there and they kind of help put that event on. Is that how Ravenna is set up or is sure. it its own deal? Yeah. Uh, Tim McEwen, uh, the Barrents are involved with that event as well. Um, Tim is my point man that I, I talk to uh, as far as getting the contract together. And and uh, uh, he's my main point of contact with that event. So, yeah, any one of those guys I think would work uh, as far as interviewing. But I'll reach out to Tim. And if he wants to come on, uh, we'll get Tim on here next week. and. Uh, if he doesn't want to talk to us, we'll get one of the other guys. If uh, whoever feels more comfortable uh, speaking on here, we'll get one of them on here. <laughs> Understood. So everybody, you've heard Ron and I and, and Dave Nelson and Leroy talk about this app, this Outlaw app. You guys, it is slick. It's free. And that's what it looks like. Okay. Go to your app store. And uh, what I love about it, Ron, is, I mean, it's boom. It's right there. There's your, you know, there's your results from the light, limited modified class on Saturday night. And if you're watching from home fans, and it's not just for pullers. That's, you know, that's the thing that Ron and I want to let everybody know. It's for the fans as well, for distances. And yes, yes, the puller can sign up on here. Yes, it's got some puller directions for the pits. But it's also for you, the spectator, the fan, the sponsor, to see, you know, maybe you're back at the starting line or maybe you're sitting up in the stands and you just want to keep up. Or maybe you can't make it to that specific pull and you're watching on outlawpulling.tv this still gives you a chance to see the results going right down, right down the way. And I, I love it. It's awesome, Ron. We're, it's awesome. we're like right now here in the middle of the week. And uh, of course, you know, we have a pretty good idea of who's leading the points and what classes after one event. But, you know, after multiple events, you might be wondering who's, who's leading the limited pro stock points of the outlaws right now, pull up the app, look up the points race. You'll find out who's leading it and by how much and, and total points and the whole shebang right there on the app. So. I like it. And then like Roger Rui says, plus the driving app too. That I think that's really slick. So yeah, we actually tested it out to to uh make sure it was all accurate driving to Dubuque and it took us right to the gate. So uh yeah, pretty good, pretty good deal. Love the additions we've made to it, the uh the, the new and improved outlaw app. So I like it. And outlawpulling.tv, Ron, how many events are we gonna are you, will you guys be live streaming at this year? We're doing every single event. Awesome. Every event um, we're setting up to, we have several times this year where we're pulling in two places at once and we're setting up to cover both events on those nights. Great. So we get every single outlaw hook on outlaw pulling.tv. So I want to congratulate the winners, Ron, from <clears throat> that Saturday night in the debut. Great pulling track, great competition there. The crowd was a little light and I'm going to blame it on the rain. And I know that's a Millie Vanilli song. But actually, they didn't sing it. They got in trouble, I believe, Ron, for that. <laughs> well, let's not sing it tonight. How about that? <laughs> but um, we got, you know, there was nothing on the radar, really. But we did just drizzled for a good hour right before showtime. And and I know it hurt our crowd because people are amped up to, to get out there. But we still had a nice crowd. Not as big as we wanted. But it was still a, that track. Oh, man, I was licking my chops. I wish my tractor had been there, Ron. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, and I assume you're talking about the – the high side up there where the yes, roads were pulling. Yeah, yep. I think the lower side had a little soft hole in it there uh, up to about a hundred feet, but the high side I think was a lot better. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, as far as the fans, you know, I, it was hard to see from the crow's nest because the folks sat up kind of high. Yep. I think to get a better vantage point, because uh, the track, of course, is a, it's a circle track and it sits kind of low because of the wall. So the pullers set up high. Uh, there was 2,500 through the gate was the official count. So, oh, good. Um, Honestly, Ron, it didn't, it didn't feel like that from looking at it, but that's such right. a big, such a big grandstand and such a big wrap around there. You, yep, I mean, right you get a lot of people in there. So. Absolutely. Um, I have not talked to Taylor yet, Nate. I'm not sure what go what's going on with this turbo. I didn't feel like talking to him Saturday night after the pull. If my new tractor didn't get, leave the starting line, I didn't. I don't want anybody talking to me. So I haven't had a chance to talk to Taylor yet. I don't know, Ron. Did he, did he mention you at all? Uh, you know, I, I I didn't talk to him. Uh, it was kind of a late night getting things tore down, and I think by the time. Uh, I got pulled up on the top there where I knew I wouldn't get stuck down there. If it rained again, I think uh, he had already hit the hit the hay and was already asleep in his toter. So did not get a chance to talk to him. And that he said that just dated me, Millie Vanilli. I'm 45, Ron. I claim it. Okay. <laughs> I'm 45. So Roger Rui, how many hooks? I, Roger, I think 65 total hooks is what I heard Leroy or them say. Um, I think does that sound right, Ron? Uh, it was right there around 60. Uh, okay. Right so, Jim, sure. so I'm reading right off the Outlaw app, and all of you can go to that, guys um, and gals that are watching the show tonight, and, and spread the word. It's a free app. Uh, go to your app store, go to your Play Store, whatever system you have. Um, Jim Brackett, and from Centerview, Missouri, with the Outlaw Red, won the Light Limited Mod at 424 feet, <laughs> 777. So that's not a that's not a misprint. Four wheel drives, Foxy Lady. That's going to be our guest tonight, Charlie Miller from Creston, Iowa, went 314 and 33. He put 10 feet on the bone, so he had a heck of a pass. He did. Uh, Two-wheel drives, bottoms up, Dustin Amundsen, near Strand, Minnesota, 334-72. Second place was relentless. Scott Weens was right behind them. Uh, limited pro stocks, the winner went to Green Mule. Uh, Jerry Mason from Marseilles, Illinois, at 353. Last year's points champion, the one bad apple, finished in second at 347-69. Uh, Unlimited Supers went to Alter Eagle. Brian Bowles, 377, and that was a beautiful pass, Ron. It was. If you if you haven't got a chance yet, you can go back on outlawpulling.tv and you can watch it. But man, the all the photographers that were there were licking their chops because oh. it was rear ends down and front ends up, and it was beautiful. Oh, there was beautiful some beautiful. great picks from from Saturday night. All the photographers did a great job. Yep, the Gopher, see Jonathan Foster. If you had the Outlaw app, you could just go there and I, you could see that the Gopher got seventh place. Out of 14, or out of 15, excuse me. So that, that's how that works. And then Diesel Supers was won by Mr. Kent Payne and a Super, Super Rooster, Petersburg, Indiana, 369 feet. A great, just the track was awesome, Ron. Power another, track. Another great uh, photo, photo esque or photographic uh, run on that one as well. So I've been trying to share pictures, Ron, to the Outlaw page. Uh, uh, Brian Thurston was there. Um, Clayton Olam was there, Brandon Johnson, and uh, Brent, Brent Yarin from Hooked Up Pulling Production. If I missed somebody else, I apologize. But those are the four guys that kind of um, – I saw a lot of their pictures, and I've been trying to share them up there. Yeah, so. Clayton must have been hanging over the guardrail. He took a couple. looked like he was right in front of the trucks I, or, and tractors. Uh, he took some really good picks Saturday and night. Bottom charger would not light. There is Mr. Van Beek himself. Um, and that is straight from the horse's mouth. And I'm not calling you a horse, Kurt, but I'm just saying that you know what you're talking about. So it's all good. It's all good. So, we, Ron, you know, a great way to get to season. I know you were pretty amped up Saturday, just nervous and anxiety at high levels. But, I mean, I was nervous about my little event Thursday night. I can't imagine putting on a pole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think tensions were high. I, I think there was a lot of nervousness with – those dark clouds that moved in about an hour before uh, that weren't on the radar and the cool air that was coming out of those clouds. And then uh, of course the mist started and uh, you know, the nervousness got a little higher. Uh, the anxiety got, got up there a little bit, but um, we got through it. Hey, it, it cleared off and, and we made it. So yeah, it turned uh, out to, it actually turned out to be a really nice night, Ron. Hey, Ron, also, I don't have room to put all the all your sponsors on the bottom scroller. It only lets me have so many characters. So I do want to also reach out, you know, thank AgriShield, Super Clean, uh, Fair Valley Performance, Extreme Performance, and Tire Cutting, Diesel Performance, um, Northwoods Engineering, Weimer Fuel Injection and Turbo, Stop Fire, Graham's Tire, 
and my good friends at Hearts Diesel as well. So um, I don't. I'll have to figure out, Ron. Maybe to I can switch that up for you every week, or I'll figure Sorry, out something to get everybody's name on there. So wanted you to know that I can read. I just can't fit all those characters on one line. So. Gotcha. And eventually, I'll put a banner behind me. It's got them all on it anyway. So well, we're you know we talked about this Saturday night, and you know uh, we got to get started, and we hope to hear from you. I think it'll be like I said when we opened up the show, Ron. I'll try to always open up the show with some video from outlawpulling.tv. We'll talk about the app. We'll wrap up the debut, you know, the previous weekend's polls, talk about upcoming polls. And like I said, hopefully try to get a, some a, some of the pullers on here as well, too, either from a previous event or an upcoming event. Or um, The one thing, Ron, that we don't get to do is we don't really get to show the personalities of our competitors. You and I know them. We get to hang out with them before the polls, after the polls, you know, Saturday during the day, and, you know, if we get a chance to go through the pits or whatever. But I think this is going to be a good way, Ron, for people to really to meet the people. And we switched to this video format where you can see their face. And um, I really enjoyed this. And I'm, I'm looking forward to doing this with you throughout the season to really promote the Outlaw Truck and Tractor Pulling Association. So Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll introduce uh, America to the Outlaws. Yep. Uh, via this show. So uh, we got a lot um, of good guys a lot of good, and a lot of good gals as well. So Mike Stefan, I, think, I don't think Matt Goodwin's running yet. My dad talked to him on Saturday. And um, just, I think he's still waiting on parts. I think that seems to be a common theme. I was actually pretty happy because Ron May, you know, May 22nd is an early hook for yeah. any national organization, right? Right, exactly. And I think there might have been a graduation involved there, I heard as well. Um, it is graduation season, you know, in May. So um, that, that might have kept a few pullers at home as well, that uh, along with the rain, the threat of rain. Um, so, yeah. I, Kind of was missing him there, but uh, I'm sure we'll see him here down the road. Now, with the outlaws, when you're running points, you you can miss two hooks or you can drop two hooks. How do you guys do that? Depends on the number in the class. Okay. Um, it, it depends on not the number in the class, but the amount of hooks okay. uh, that we have. Uh, we just discussed this at a rules meeting, and I can't remember what that number is. Uh, Kurt, maybe put that number on there for me. I know he's watching. Um, but like say, you know, a lot of our Texas guys didn't show up this weekend, uh, our two-wheel drive, Texas two-wheel drives. Um, so that would be one of their misses uh, that they can take. So, you know, but it, it's but it's it early be, for that. But. It can be a miss, Ron, or it could be a bad hook too, right? Correct. could be a bad hook. could be, you know, one of the ones where you can't get the sled moving, can't get a turbo to light, um, or just simply a, a really low finish um, that you want to, you want to not forget, not not want to re not remember it and forget it, <laughs> and uh, literally we can forget it uh, with that rule where they can drop drop a hook. Yep. So again, our guest tonight's gonna be Charlie Miller, the Foxy Lady. He won the four by four modified truck class Saturday night in Dubuque, Iowa. Well, when I see him jump on, Ron, I'll bring him on the screen and we'll start talking to him. Um, let's start heading into Ravenna a little bit. Again, if you haven't downloaded the Outlaw app yet, you're gonna hear us say that a lot. Um, because it's, it's free and it's good and it's got results and it's got driving directions and all the things that you need as a spectator and or a puller themselves. But I'm going to head over to the Outlaw Pulling website <clears throat> and I'm going to bring up Ravenna. That's June 11th and 12th, Ron, right? I don't want to screw that up. Yeah. Um, yes, June 11th and 12th. Ravenna's, the pool, Ravenna's one of the pools that's been on a long time, right, Ron? Yes, it is. That's been on the outlaw schedule for many years. Uh, 7 p.m. on Friday night, 5 p.m. on Saturday night in Ravenna. Ron, it just got uglier. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yes, it did. Charlie Miller. Hey, guys. How's it going? What's up, Fox and Lady? Oh, I'm hanging out in a truck stop in Missouri right now. I like it. Thank you for doing this tonight. Everybody, There's that's a beautiful truck that Charlie owns and drives. The Foxy Lady, your winner, wiener, Saturday night in... Um, in the great state of Iowa in Dubuque there. Charlie had a heck of a pass, but 10 feet on that level of competition. I mean, it was, you gotta be feeling pretty good, bud. Oh yeah. Feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty lucky. The truck didn't really run up to what we was hoping for. <laughs> that that probably sounds a little strange being that he won the class over some of the top mod four befores in the country, but uh, I heard it Saturday <laughs> night and I, people probably thought I was crazy, but I heard that, that, it wasn't a hundred percent. Explain, explain what went on with the truck, Charlie. Oh, uh, we're thinking that maybe the uh, crank trigger went bad, and uh, it may only run on about six cylinders. 
Uh, I haven't looked at the computer yet, but that's kind of what we're leaning to. Uh, now, interesting that you say that. If you had, uh, if that was running 100, percent would you have done better or worse? I'd like to hope I'd done better, but I don't. <laughs> I, I mean, would. and I say that meaning maybe uh, some of the others were overpowering the track at certain points in the track, maybe. Yeah, they, they were. Uh, it was definitely tricky for us. You couldn't get after it too soon. Uh, yeah, I heard a few guys backpedaling there within the first hundred feet, trying to get get them to hook up. Um, I even did on six cylinders. <laughs> So starting out in the number one spot, not uh, not too shabby to start out the season that way. No, nope, can't get any better than that. Oh. Um, and against some of the toughest trucks in the country, we had some pretty stout trucks there this weekend. Yeah, I think we would have had more had the weather been a little better. Or... Yeah. Brian or, uh, Charlie, Brian Nelson says he did that on purpose. He didn't want anybody to know all the horsepower he's making. So. <laughs> That's what some people said. <laughs> well, I posted a picture today, uh, Jason. I don't know if you saw it. The, I think the secret to his success in the hauler. Did you see that picture I posted today? Is it on the Outlaw Facebook page? Uh, I think I put it in as a comment, actually. Okay, let me uh, go check it out quick. <laughs> yeah, it's in the comments. <laughs> okay. So next hook for the mod four-wheel drives is, help me out, Charlie. Manila. Manila. Yep. That's June 26. Yep. Yes. Charlie, you got a month off. What are you going to do? <laughs> Work on a truck for sure. Work on a truck for sure. I, I don't think I'm going to get that lucky twice. Yeah, get that crank trigger figured out for sure. Yeah, I'll probably run off the mag just to make sure. Have you ever pulled against uh, the Skeltons before, Charlie? Uh, I believe I did down to Louisville. Okay. Yeah, you would have. And of course, the uh, the Holman brothers were there, uh, and you pulled against them probably at Louisville as well. Uh, pulled with them at uh, Rock Valley last Rock year. Rock Valley, yeah. yeah, great bunch of guys. Yep. Um, talking to uh, 2019 uh, modified four wheel drive points champ Charlie Miller. Charlie, does uh does Dad ever get to drive anymore? About once a tw or twice a year. Any particular place he likes to pull at, or just whenever he just Feels, gets a wild hair. Just whenever he says he wants to drive. <laughs> of course, you got to give him that, give him that opportunity to drive that thing. And, uh, it kind of helps me too. I, it's uh, a different view from sitting in the seat. I can see what the truck's doing on the outside. I right. That. Kind of cool to see your own truck going down the track too, with somebody else driving it. Yes, it is. I always try video on it, but it never works out too well. I get too <laughs> caught up and watch. <laughs> I can see that. I can see. You that. hold the camera there, Charlie, and the truck goes by, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. It happens. If so, anybody has any questions for Charlie Miller or comments, or they want to give him any crap, please type it in the comments. We'll be more than happy to oh pass boy. it on to Charlie. So <laughs> we're liable to bring we're liable to bring down the site here with that. Steve <laughs> Deckinger says this interview would be would be better at two a.m. in the pits. That's probably true. Yeah, well, we're gonna do that this year, and I'll behave. I know every nobody believes me, but I can, I can wait till two thirty a.m. to start partying if I have to. So we didn't make it to two a.m. Friday night. Yeah, I bet. I think it was about midnight. You sure about that? I think so. <laughs> and I was one of the late ones. Um, rainouts will do that to you. Yes, they will. And they haven't seen everybody in a while either, Charlie. So. That is true. Yeah, that I tell you what, that track, and Charlie, you saw it Saturday morning. Um, we could have had a mud run there Saturday morning. It, it looked pretty pretty sad. Yeah. Uh, that was the nice part about pulling on a racetrack. They uh, shed a lot of water. Yeah. The infield itself, I mean, the biggest concern was getting to the track and getting back to the pits. Um. I, I never seen so many pullers sitting in the stands watching track prep uh, as what we've seen there on Saturday. There was always pullers up there in the stands watching the preparations going on. Well, it was pretty interesting. <laughs> Did you find it, Jason? <laughs> Where'd you put that comment at, Ron? 
Oh boy. That was I, I'll look for it here. I, I I should be able to bring it up pretty quick. Uh, here's somebody's asking uh, anonymous Facebook user if if you could drive any other vehicle, what would it be? Uh, probably a two wheel drive. I've drove oh. uh, one once and it was pretty fun. So I'd I'd probably jump into that. And where would it be? What pull? Uh, I'd say like maybe Rock Valley. Mike Williams has a question. He wants to know how much nitrous does it take to get down the track? <laughs> I don't know. It wouldn't come on. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I think this is going to be a fun format, Stone. I'm glad you thought of this. So. <laughs> Definitely going to be interesting. And we got Charlie as our kind of our our test monkey, you know, our first guest. I, I like this, Charlie. Thank you for doing that. So. Thank you, guys. No, it just it was so exciting to go pull in again, Charlie, and see everybody and uh, just see stuff go down the track. You know, I mean, I kind of feel like things are getting back to normal a little bit. And uh, I can't believe, I mean, I know you got to go pull in a little bit last summer, but it still wasn't a normal summer. And I didn't get to go pull in at all. So up here in Wisconsin, they had us locked down pretty good. So it was a uh, just a lot, a lot of fun. A lot, a lot of fun. No, I a lot of uncertainty. We didn't know if we was going to hook or not. You know, everything was canceling, and then, oh, nope, it's a go. Oh. So you yeah. let everybody know what you do for a living, then. I mean, I obviously, I know you're a truck driver, but do you drive for yourself? Do you drive for a, a team? What do you got going on? No, I work for a, a company that's got about 150 trucks now. Okay. We run all 48 states in Canada, and I since I – Got done pulling Saturday night. I've been to Virginia and back into Missouri now. Wow. Charlie, what's the approximate horsepower for y'all in your class ballpark? Oh, 17, 1800. Okay. And that's from how many cubic inches? Uh, 650 all the way to 820. Uh, that still didn't answer the question, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that big. I'm only 757. 757. Yep. Well, it's a big motor. I'm going to bring up a picture of the Foxy Lady again. There she sits. So lovely, lovely truck. Um, I had another question here. What's our next event in Iowa? That's Manila, right? Yes. Okay. Because we go to Ravenna, Nebraska. Kevin Ralston's asking, what's your next event in Iowa? Ah, I got it, Ron. Let me upload that picture real quick. <laughs> The secret sauce, huh? <laughs> you add that to the VP racing fuel and away we go, right? Yep. Yeah, I walked by the hauler there. I think that was on Friday afternoon, and I had to backtrack and get a picture of that. The side door was open. I'm pretty sure it was relatively untouched by that point. <laughs> and there is and there is a secret to, um, to Charlie's success right there, everybody. Tito. <laughs> I, well, yeah. I seem to do better the next day after a long night. <laughs> well, it worked for you uh, in Dubuque. <laughs> so your your most memorable <clears throat> win, Charlie? Mm, probably, probably Rock Valley with this new motor uh, two years ago. That was the, the first win with it. We'd been having trouble with it and got drunk the night before and <laughs> then uh, come out and I was very late on the throttle and it just hooked and the motor carried it. And there was 20 some of us up to Rock Valley that year. So uh, I think Kurt had a question for you, Jason. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Not quite <laughs> sure how to answer that. Um, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, the, my pistons and rods are supposed to be done this week, and then I, I'm waiting on my intake, and then Tony will get everything put back together. I really – that's my goal to make Ravenna um, the, for the first two hooks of the year. But like I said, my goal was to be in Dubuque as well. So <laughs> we'll just we'll just see how it goes. Charlie knows what it's like when it comes to parts. So Yeah, we just about didn't make Dubuque. We was uh, getting our motor about two weeks ago and I don't think the silicone silicone had quite dried when we picked it up. 
and I finished hooking things up Thursday night, and we left Friday morning. Who does the engine work? Do you take it back to Sonny's or? No, uh, Fred Blue down here in Rolla, Missouri. Okay. He's is Fred doing any pulling these days? No, no. just working on our stuff. Okay. You heard anything from him about possibly getting back into it? I heard a rumor, but nothing maybe it was just definite. that. Yeah, no, nothing definite. Yeah, just never know. <laughs> so, Charlie, right. you go Manila, Iowa, June 26th. Rock Valley, July 9th and 10th. David City, Nebraska, July 17th. Montgomery City, Missouri, the 23rd. Sweet Springs, Missouri, July 24th. Britt, uh, Iowa, July 28th. Is it Corridon, Iowa? Am I saying that right, Ron? Corridon, yeah. Corridon, July 30th. August 6th, Gibbon, Nebraska. Mobile, Iowa, August 7th. Macon, Missouri, August 14th. Iowa State Fair. That's going to be so cool to be back there. Charlie, you got any good State Fair memories? No, none yet. Not yet? No. I haven't had a whole lot of success there. I think I was runner up once, but there's normally a lot of good trucks there. So if you, if you win that one, you definitely earned it. Yep. And then you're heading to Wisner, Nebraska. August 2021, Madison, South Dakota, August 28th. Let's see, Warrensburg, Missouri, the September 10th. Cape Girardeau, Missouri, September 17th. And then Spencer, Iowa, the 19th. We got 20 hooks in that class, uh, Charlie, for you this season. Are any of those pulls new for you, or those are all places you've had the Foxy Lady at in the past? No, uh, I think uh, Davis City and and Gibbons will be new for us. Uh, Sweet Springs, I don't believe we've been there, but I think the rest of them we've pretty well been to. Do you do you take a lot of notes on like track conditions and, and from previous events, and do you look at them from year to year, or is it just a new year's a new year? No, I actually remember most of it from year to year. Okay. And, and no, I take very little notes. Uh, I pretty well know what I run for gear and everything, and like year to year, there's a lot of similarities. Who makes most of the decisions when it comes to, say, changing a gear? Uh, that would be. That that be you. Yeah, yeah, for the most part. What and, what? Uh, what's that? Uh, I was I was sorry. I was reading a, a question somebody had sent in there. No, this. <laughs> I gotta tell the story quick. So uh, Josh and I are announcing down in, uh, for Clint Meddy, our outlaw pro stock, you know, the bulletproof buck and uh, bullfrog. No, what's the bull? What's Connor's tractor? Bull? Uh, bull Bullwagon. Bullwagon. Bull wagon. And uh, we interviewed the 466 Hot Farm winner, and we're like, is there anybody you want to thank? And he said, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Meddy had got the guy like a, you know, a $200 cooler with a logo on it. And, and I said, are you serious? He goes, nope, it's all me. And I just started laughing, Charlie. I didn't, I didn't know what to say. And, and that's odd for me to be speechless, guys, as you all know. So how long have you been pulling, Charlie? Uh, I think I've been driving since like 97 or 8, something like that. So several years. Um, how long has your dad been, been pulling? Uh, since 93. 93. Yeah. And uh, the changes to the truck over the years, I mean, what did you guys start out with? Just We started out with a uh, 72 Chevy uh, steel body and uh, a pickup frame. And then we went to a uh, 2000 Chevy and we built a frame for it. And then we built this uh, S10 and, and a chrome molly frame. And I think we're going on year six with it. We, yeah, the, this one. That mod four wheel drive class has changed quite a bit over the years. Um, the you know the chassis, the the power plants, of course. Um, very few guys in the class, honestly, that aren't running the, you know, the the Sonny Leonard type Hemi in the in those trucks. Uh, 
I, I know that, uh, you know, some other organizations, you got like Steve Clem that's still, uh, you know, building the big Chevys, but uh, uh, name some of the differences you could think of that have come around the, the mod four wheel drive class since you started. Uh, they've got a lot more expensive. Uh, <laughs> we used to start them up and drive them everywhere. Now we pull them everywhere. And uh, now everybody wants them as light as they can on the back end. Get as much weight on the nose. What does the Foxy Lady wear uh, weigh with no weights on it? I mean whole truck wise or whole, whole truck with no weights, no uh, suitcase weights on it. What does it weigh? Oh, it would weigh right around thirty five hundred to four thousand. Wow. It when we got it, uh, just the bare frame we could pick it up and move it by hand. Yeah, that's that's a lot of weight out there on the nose. Yeah. If you take the back tires off, it'll sit on the weight box. Well, Charlie, and I I was out on the track when you were backing up and your rear tires weren't touching. I mean, you had to back out, you pull out the one time and get back in. And that's, you were one of the trucks I could really tell. And I was explaining that to the people when I was doing the live video that once they hooked that chain, watch the back of that squat. And then Ron was doing the same thing over the loudspeaker as well. <clears throat> Charlie, I'm going to play your, uh, this is your run from White Wright, Texas, June 29th of 19. What kind of RPMs are you leaving the starting line? Looks like, sounds like he got after it right away here. Let me, we'll play the video, then we'll talk about it. There you, you kind of kind of see that rear end pop up there, Charlie, as you were backing up. So, yeah, I, I remember that run. We we was having trouble yet at that point, and uh, it was uh, it had it was pretty lean on the bottom end, and when you take off with it, it just wanted to run away. So it left about eighty five hundred. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. It, we normally only turn about seven to seventy-five now going down the track. Where did where did the name Foxy Lady come from? That was actually the name on the original truck that we bought. Uh, the original seventy-two had uh, Jessica uh, from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Who did you, where'd that come from? Was that your guys' truck, Charlie? Did you buy it from somebody? No, uh, we bought it from uh, Tom Bratz in Centerville, Iowa. Is there any pictures on your Facebook page or anything of the old truck, the original truck? Uh, yeah, I believe there is. Well, that'd be I'm, cool to see. I'm going to do some research, Ron. You keep talking, okay? Absolutely. I got Absolutely. Foxy Lady Jimi Hendrix, and I do my Google search. Yeah. Foxy Lady Boutique. Foxy Lady Dress Shop. <laughs> just having fun with you charlie you, you might find some interesting stuff searching that. <laughs> <laughs> so any rivalries charlie with anybody in your class no rivalries no not really we we all get along pretty well uh hang out who do you fear, who do you fear the most on the track everybody <laughs> They're, they're all good. I mean, yeah. anybody went on any given night. That's, I was sweating until the last one run the other night just because I knew that they was all capable. Yeah, the uh, you put close to 10 feet on the second place there. Pretty, pretty amazing pass considering uh, your crank trigger wasn't uh, functioning 100%. Like I said, I think people in the crowd and probably people at home listen and thought I was crazy because you can't really hear it on the vi on the audio when you watch, watch it on the live stream. But I definitely heard it up in the crow's nest. I thought something's not right. Then you pulled out there and put 10 feet on everybody. And it's like, wow, maybe I'm just hearing something and hearing things. No, I, 
I pretty well knew it as soon as I took off and, and I could have let off and just shut the truck off and unhooked one wire and plugged another one in and tried it again. That would have let me know if it's crank trigger or not, but yeah, was, yeah. go ahead, Charlie. Sorry. I need that much power. So I, the last time it did that, uh, I led the class to the last few run on that run too. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, it's interesting because you very well may have won it by not overpowering it there. There was a lot of guys had trouble there, especially in that first hundred feet. Yeah, it, it was tricky. I mean, all, all these new motors, they're so, uh, quick compared to the old ones. They, they rev up really quick. So you just kind of got to baby them. Jason's showing some, uh, some older pics there of different versions of the Foxy Lady. Yep, that was number two. That was number two? Yep. So I got to go farther back, huh? Yep. I've got a lot of pictures on there. You're going to have to go a long ways. Oh, no, I'm fine. I'm, you don't, don't challenge me, Charlie. I'll find them. So. so you're pulling heroes, Charlie. Do you have any heroes? Growing up uh, in the polling world, who, who did who did you want to emulate? Probably my dad. I mean, that's who got me started. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I, I grew up uh, going to polls back in the seventies and and eighties, and uh, uh, it's just amazing how much polling has changed with uh, you know the race slits and like I said, the chassis and the motors. It's just Back in the 70s and 80s, it's more like they were lugging, you know, like uh, lower RPM and lugging the sled. And and now it's high RPM and high speed. Uh, it's a lot different. Charlie, is that number one? Nope, that's still number two. Oh, man, that's from 2010, bud. Yeah. Number one is a 72? Yeah. Chevy? Anybody has any questions for Charlie or about the outlaws in general? Go ahead and type them in there. Hey, Charlie, you all right to hang out for a little bit? Sure, yeah. I've got till about four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> uh, Josh Runyon, what's the biggest pool you've ever competed at or won? I think Ron might have asked that earlier. I think you said maybe Rock Valley, is that what you said? Yeah, I've, I've won there. I've, I won uh, White Wright, Texas when it was really big. Uh, competed at Louisville. That's probably the top of the list. Yeah, Louisville's a pretty big deal. Uh, that's definitely a notch in, in your belt. Quite the honor. You still John Robinson great. from Rockwall, Texas is watching, so... So you and uh, uh, Eric, um, you guys are kind of like the dynamic duo, I think, um, with the Outlaws in the Mon Four Wheel Drive class. Um, you guys challenge each other quite a bit. Oh yeah, yeah. And what one doesn't think of, the other does. <clears throat> I know you guys are sure giving me a lot of trouble there Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> Just think of that have been about two thirty in the morning. <laughs> I tell you what, I was beat after this weekend. I was worn out. You're not back into pulling shape yet, Ron. I know it. I know it. That's probably true. Too much campaign and not enough training. So I'm gonna find those pictures, Charlie. I'm gonna find those pictures. Okay. <clears throat> Any it was there ever a time, Charlie, you that you and your dad both were like, you know what? Let's just hang it up. It's too expensive. We're, you know, maybe going through a rough spell, breaking parts, not winning. Was there ever time that uh, you guys ever considered? No. Uh, we discussed what to do when we built this last truck. Uh, whether we want to just run till we wasn't competitive no more or what. Uh, and we decided to go ahead and build another truck and, we kind of figured that we, you know, we had to have a hobby. So outside of both of us are truck drivers. So right. 
So we decided to build another truck and go again. I I wanted to build a two-wheel drive, and I got outvoted on that. <laughs> yeah, it's just a interesting question. You know, some some teams they go through a, a bad spell, and you know they actually consider. You know, you know maybe we should just uh, quit for a while, take a break. But uh, that's why I asked that question. No, never never contemplated it. We've, uh, so when did you switch to the Hemi? What year was that? Uh, 19. Differences between the the old motor and the Hemi? Yeah. Yeah, the our old wedge motor made good power, but this one just, it does so much more. And, and we don't have to be that hard on it. The wedge motors, you kind of got to get after them pretty good anymore. Yeah. Got to beat on them a little bit. Yeah. Jason, you still haven't found it. It's hard at it. I went all the way back on Charlie's Facebook page. I got back to 2010. I didn't see anything that the 72. So now I'm doing a Google search. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you to look on the ones that I that I uploaded. It's, it's in there. There's one in there of uh, our truck and Fred Blues. That was a uh, ad for uh, ProFab. On your then. personal page, Charlie? Yeah. <clears throat> I can remember that one. Charlie, you have any sponsors on the truck? No. No Dad sponsors? Our only sponsors. It's you and Dad, the only sponsors, yeah. huh? And, uh, we were talking earlier about how the outlaws, you could miss a hook. Um, are you going to make all the hooks this year or any, any, any pulls you'll have to miss? No, I, I think we're planning on hitting everyone. Plus <clears throat> something unforeseen comes up. There, Kurt just put up the numbers for misses. Jason, up to 10 hooks, no misses. Up to 20, 10 to 20 is one. Um, yeah, above 20, you can get two misses, but the diesel super stock class decided uh, Dubuque to be counted as a point hook. So we start that in Manila, Iowa. Besides the outlaws, Charlie, any other organizations you pulled with, or has it always been with the outlaws? No, we started out running with the, uh tri-state uh then we switched to outlaws pretty well full-time in about 2003 i believe haha -ha, look there that one's not our even our truck what <laughs> no what? that's the white lightning <clears throat> that's ronnie Eblum's truck uh it, it's actually from creston there you go all, all three of them trucks are from creston What year would that have been, Charlie, approximately? That would have been probably 95 or 6, somewhere in there. Do you know where your old bus hauler is? Yeah, it was sitting in a junkyard in uh, Creston. Okay. And we actually bought that red one uh, a few years after that and run it until about 2006 or seven. I always wondered those old school buses if they would get up to highway speeds. Like I know a lot of them were around back before the uh, interstates were speed limit was seventy. Um, would those things even do seventy miles an hour? Oh yeah, but they <laughs> yeah. good motors and some fast gears. They run seventy five eighty pretty easy. I know I, I drove a truck that. Uh, I actually drove a beer truck for a while. That thing wouldn't go a tick over 55 mile an hour. <laughs> yeah, these were uh, not your average school bus. <laughs> now, what is this picture here? Uh, that's my dad and I. Uh, we just got done putting our wedge motor together. 2010. 
Any championships back with the uh, old wedge motor? Not that one. Uh, the only other one I uh, had one with Tri-State in 96, I think. We've, uh, we've been runner up with Outlaws once or twice and several thirds and a lot of top fives. Any goals? Any goals? Anything that you absolutely want to do in pulling? Mm, I uh, I won the points at least once, and I made it to Louisville. So no, I I'd, I'd like to win Louisville once, but had a feeling that would have been at least <laughs> one of them. It's uh, it's just an honor to do either one, be a points champ, or or get invited to Louisville. I mean, if you're a polar, that's kind of your dream and goal. Absolutely. Did... How many hooks will you let Ed have this year last all out? However many he wants. <laughs> but he's he's got to drive the way I set the truck up. Did you come to Cowtown last time, Charlie? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're we're planning on having that next next March. So, but, uh... well, cool. Well, Charlie, we'll let you get back at it, buddy. I appreciate you coming on tonight and uh, updating. And congratulations again on your win in Dubuque on Saturday night. It was like you said, it was just good to see everybody again. And we'll I'll get you a bottle of Tito's next time I see you. So deal. I'm counting on it. It'll be done. Get All that right. crank trigger fixed, Charlie. <laughs> I think I'm going to run on the mag. I'm a little scared of the crank trigger right now. Yeah, I think, uh, wasn't that, uh, sorry to keep keep him on here, but uh, it was a couple years ago, uh, Josh had a piece of dirt get up uh, in his crank trigger, and boy, he blew out a big old fire up there at Wisner. Do you recall that? Mm -hmm. That Those was pretty interesting. Things. Yeah. But uh, all right, Charlie, appreciate you hanging out with us tonight. I appreciate what you guys do, and thanks for having me. Thanks, thanks Charlie. Charlie. Get some sleep, thanks. buddy. Yep. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. That <clears throat> it's neat. You know, I, I I love this format, Ron. We can introduce the pullers of the outlaws to the you know to the world, if you will, and uh, that's what this is all about. I like the fact that with the comments on the side, people can ask questions, and it's fun to see your friends jump in and do a little poke in the bear, you know, <laughs> and other competitors asking about nitrous and stuff like that. And that really shows the camaraderie that that the pullers have you know just everywhere we go ron there's a it truly is a pulling family so yeah i, I think uh, a lot of the pullers are always joking with charlie and they'll say uh, that doesn't look legal when he puts a picture of his truck on there or, or a picture of an engine uh ron can you talk about a crank trigger and what he was mag and all that stuff i i'm just a diesel guy that sounds like yeah. racing stuff to me crank trigger basically is just a more accurate way of of uh, distributing the spark to the spark plugs that takes place of the distributor and basically has a magnet on there it's a big wheel it's on goes on the front of the crankshaft and the magnet picks up points on that wheel and it's just more accurate uh, than a distributor would be okay i like it i like it a lot that was mike's course, question so mike has a picture of uh of uh Bulletproof Medics Pro Stock. He, he's asking ignition questions. So. Yep, I knew that. <laughs> I figured that. That looks like Louisville. I think Lance is driving. I can't. Yeah, it's got the tantrum on the front of there. So, um, let's. I'm gonna bring up the schedule, Ron. Let's kind of let's kind of review. Yeah, absolutely. Ravenna a little bit, and then um, we'll wrap up our first session of Outlawed with Ron Stone. I think it was a. I think it was a success. I'm sure the. You know the, the autographs are waiting for you outside your bedroom door there so it's all good so right yep so there are people out there <laughs> knocking now so <laughs> right yes yeah, some uh some other classes will debut for the 2021 season in ravenna Let's see here um, yeah i think you can you read that okay ron we got yeah june 11th to 12th that's a friday saturday correct sir yes sir uh, Friday at seven, Saturday at five. Uh, Pro stock four befores will make their debut for 2021. 
as well as light super stocks. 8500 limited pro, the light limited pros, super farms. Now that'll be the super farm class has that 36 hearts turbo this year, right? Right, right. Yep. They're going to sound completely different. <laughs> a different animal in 2021. Yep. Of course, the uh, four ones will be back for their second hook. Then uh, the pro stocks will debut oh, as well. Keep netting on the boys, yeah. Unlimited super stocks get their second and third hook. Um, two wheel drives will be back. And then the big 7,400 mod tractors will make their first hook of 2021 in Ravenna. So a lot of classes be a big show in Ravenna, Nebraska. Um, that show will be available on outlawpulling.tv if uh, can't make it out there, out to Ravenna. But uh, this is actually will be my first time going to Ravenna, Nebraska. Um, last year, of course, uh, Ravenna was a victim of coronavirus. Yep. So Brent Shorefighty says his money's on Tony Workman's tapped out tractor. Yep. Tony Shorefighty, he's a, he, he knows what he's talking about. Uh, what's this rumor that Josh says? There's a rumor there's supposed to be an old player in the mods chasing points again. We'll see, we will see in Ravenna. Can, can you confirm or deny this, Ron Stone? Mm. Um, I know of one uh, in Iowa, but Josh is down south a little ways. Give us a hint, Josh. Are we talking Texas, Oklahoma? <laughs> Brent Shorefighty says Doug Roberts. And who will? And I'm sure we'll have another concert. <laughs> oh, Will's absolutely agree. and brent says allegedly yeah i like that <laughs> yeah i've heard those rumors as well brent uh cole side check he's a married man now so yeah. he's, he's saying cotton candy the new cotton candy oh there you go here's your hint he has won a lot oh. of gold. we're talking about uh justin gallion a lot of dirt, right? Yeah, a lot of dirt. And Tito's. Yeah. <laughs> Will just woke up. We got Will up. Will <laughs> <laughs> I was going there just now. <laughs> but uh, tell us a little more about this rumor, Josh. Uh, <laughs> is he uh, planning on running points this year? You and I are sitting here just kind of waiting. If I got outlawpulling.tv up on my screen, everybody. Um, buddy Carolyn Hall. Buddy and Carolyn are watching from Missouri. So that's it makes it fun, Ron. When I do those lives like Saturday night, I like to watch where everybody's watching from. I think I counted 23 states and three different countries on Saturday night that were watching that. So that was that's pretty awesome. fun. So That's awesome. Ron, is there a season pass for outlawpulling.tv or do you buy it by the hook or how are we doing this? There is. And um, yours truly, I need to get on there and list all of our pulls this week that we're, we're going to be offering with the outlaws. So um, I'll fill that page up with pulls for 2021. So yes, there will be a season pass available. Okay. Um, basically it'd be a, a, an annual subscription. You can buy, um, let's say like uh, Ravenna coming up, you could buy one night or get a deal. If you buy both nights, you could buy a monthly subscription or you can buy an annual subscription. Uh, whichever you purchase, if you buy a monthly subscription, you can watch everything on Outlaw Pulling TV for 30 days that either that has pulled up to that point. So that includes the live events and you can go back and watch pulls from last season as well. Um, annual subscription, of course, um, you have that for a whole year and same deal. You have uh, access to the past polls as well as the live polls coming up. And I, I just, I just wanted to show people again, how easy it is to download the app. I just brought it up, Ron, on the screen. That's what it's going to look like on your app store or your Google play store or whatever your, you know, Samsung, whatever device, Android device that you have, um, Mark Cam was checking in from South Dakota, one of our photographers. We see a lot, especially out in that Rock Valley area. Um, 
Let's see. Jason Latch says, it'll be interesting to see the new track at the Iowa State Fair. I would agree with that a million percent. Josh says, Justin has been out of points for a couple years, as you know, but he's planning on making the full circuit with the mod. That's going to be awesome. Great. So. Awesome. And bringing the two-wheel drive as well, I'm assuming. Yeah, I would assume. I would that's, assume. That's awesome. He's pretty tough. Well, Ron, I don't know. I mean, we covered Ravenna. I guess we could look look ahead. I mean, I'll bring the, the schedule back up, and then we're going to shut this baby down for the night. And then you tell me what day works for you next week, and we'll see who you want to get on. I just got to schedule it, Ron, and I'll send you that link, and you can share yeah. with the bowlers, okay? So. I like Tuesdays, if you're good with Tuesdays. I am, actually. Yeah, um, that would be fine with me. So. With the pool still uh, from the previous right. weekend is fresh in our minds. and Yeah, I actually asked Leroy to jump on with us because you and Leroy sound really, really good together. And he did a great job Saturday night in Dubuque. But his daughter had a softball game tonight. So, Ravenna, Nebraska yeah. is June 11th and 12th. And then Arlington, Nebraska is June 19th. Manila, Iowa, June 26th. White, right, Texas. I think that's co-sanctioned with TTTPA a little bit, right? You guys have four classes, and I think yeah. they have four classes maybe. Are there Two tracks classes? there uh, yeah. um, with Texas Tractor Pullers Association in White Right. Um, I'll be announcing Manila. Okay. Josh and our, our, our buddy Dave Bennett will be in White Right. Yep. And, uh, and of course, after that, it's uh, Rock Valley. So – Hey, Ron, when I see under pull on the left side here, like SPN, EN, GN, EN, UN, RN, what's all that mean? Uh, that's the sanctioning. It's uh, regional national, grand national, uh, unlimited national, elite national, um, state state hooks, um, super national. Um, that's just basically the, the size of the pool, basically. The, the, like the purse? Yeah, the purse. Okay, cool. I wasn't Absolutely. sure how all that worked. And then on the far right there, lists of sleds. And, and all this is, I believe, is on the app as well. Um, what's RR? Is that That'd red? be Red Rock. Red Rock. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, I'm I'm learning slowly but surely, Ron. I'm yeah, yeah. Surely. Uh, Gary Sabatka has the Red Rock and the Rock. Okay. In his arsenal. Uh, and they pull with us all year along with uh, the Bauer sleds. So that was a brand new Bauer sled that was uh, debuted uh, Saturday night. That was their newest, latest and greatest right there. It was now, nice sled. That's Kevin and Lori's, right? Yep. Yep. Kevin. Good deal. Well, Ron, I'm gonna whip. I'm yep. gonna play some video from Saturday night to kind of once we um once you and I quit uh, talking, and I guess let's just stay in touch and let me know who who you can round up for next Tuesday night. Let's. You want to shoot for Tuesdays at 7 for Outlawed with Ron Stone? Is that fine? I like Tuesdays at 7. Okay. Then that's what we're going to do, my man. So keep talking a little bit while I uh, get some video queued up, okay? Okay. Yeah, Jason and I are going to uh, be doing this every Tuesday at 7, as you just heard. Um, we'll recap the uh, weekend of pulling with the Outlaws, as well as bring on some pullers, uh, that pulled like we did tonight. We had Charlie Miller on. He was the winner of the mod four-wheel drive class. Um, we'd like to bring on a puller or two. And then, um, of course, this week we got a couple weekends off, but it's not always going to be like that. Uh, some of these shows might get pretty busy uh, when the schedule gets really, really busy in the middle of the summer. Um, say like the week of the Wisner week. We'll be at Iowa State Fair two days that week and then Wisner that weekend. So, that Tuesday night, we'll have to do something a little bit different because we'll be pulling at the Iowa State Fair. Um, but we'll we'll promote those pulls coming up um, on Outlawed every Tuesday at seven. Um, you got a video queued up there. Yeah. So let let's let's sign yeah. off, Ron, and uh, we'll see everybody next Tuesday, bud. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Take care. Jason. Thanks for doing this. Thank you guys for tuning in. Oh, our current lead right now, one bad apple, 347 and 69. Leroy, he was flirting with that left boundary down there at the end, but the tractor stayed in. It looked like the sled might have went out. The tractor has to go out to be deemed disqualified. The sled could touch the line all at once, but it looks like he stayed in. What do we have for track width tonight? Do we have 240-foot tracks, 235-foot tracks? 
Not for sure. Yeah, not certain on the width. At least 30 to 35 feet. Like to go, you know, 40 to 45 feet. The, the speeds we're dealing with in pulling nowadays, the wider the track, the better. And we have 337 feet, point nine one, which will put him into the number two spot, grandstand side, Brent Paddock, the digging deep deer, 337 and 91. That was the first tractor we saw from Kansas in this class. We've seen Wisconsin, Illinois, Missouri, and Nebraska, and the digging deep deer out of Mound City, Kansas. Now let's go to Lebanon, Missouri, coming undone, Bo Eilenstein. You'll have another Kansas tractor coming up here in this class as well. We'll see Brent's son come up towards the end of the class. All right, Tyler Paddock. Seth Davis coming up next. Modified four-wheel drive class. Orange Chevrolet out of Jefferson, Wisconsin. 301.56, the mark to beat. Jamie Bush just edged out Matt Davis to take the lead over in that class. Good class of modified four-wheel drives here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We've got trucks from as far away as Ohio and Georgia here tonight. Michigan in the house. Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Missouri, Ohio, and Georgia, all represented in this modified four-wheel drive class here tonight, Dubuque. VP Racing Fuels, the spec fuel of the outlaws. Every single vehicle you see going down a track here tonight is running VP Racing Fuel, whether it be diesel fuel, gasoline, or alcohol. The water used in the water injection systems in the turbocharged tractors is also from VP Racing Fuels. Check them out at vpracingfuels.com as they have additives for your car's engine, your lawnmower, your ATV, you name it. VP Racing Fuels got that additive. Give you more horsepower, more mileage. vpracingfuels.com. A lot of backpedaling. He was trying to get a hold of the track. Did not like the way it felt. Maybe too many RPMs from the motor. You heard him back off the throttle and jump back in it. He was trying to get the tires to slow down just enough to hook up. Never seemed to get a hold of it out here tonight. 298.01. On the grandstand side, this is the tractor that finished number seven in points for our 2020 pulling season. Talking about coming undone, coming undone. Bill Eilenstein from Lebanon, Missouri. The one bad apple continues to lead. The distance to beat grandstand side is 347 and 69. You know, a history of success starts with the consistent yield potential of DeKalb brand corn, featuring exclusive genetics, whole farm solutions, and unmatched dealer support to help you realize the future of performance. DeKalb is a proud sponsor of the Outlaw Truck and Tractor Pulling Association. Chain roll tight. Here comes Bill Eilenstein coming undone. Lebanon, Missouri.
That was a good, strong pass. He's down there by that leader flag, Ron. You know what he was doing right there, Leroy? But he was deer hunting, trying to get past the paddocks, trying to get past Brent Paddock, go a little bit further to get past the leader, his fellow international puller, Blake Ott. Grandstand side. He did get by the paddocks, but he did not get by the one bad apple. 342 and 98. 342.98, which will put him in the number two spot. Bo Eilenstein, currently number two, grandstand side, 342 and 98. The Wild Wind Chevrolet out of Bigelow, Minnesota. Mike Williams. Getting ready to take his turn. Rolls the slack out of the chain. Has to beat the distance set by Jamie Bush, who sits in the lead at Two seventy six point four, two seventy six point four for Mike Williams comes up short with the wild wind Chevrolet grandstand side. The ramrod number two out of Cleo, Iowa, Rod Ewing, Rod Ewing and the John Deere out of Cleo, Iowa. One bad apple continues to lead three forty seven and sixty nine. Grandstand side, ramrod number two, Rod Ewing, Cleo, Iowa. Gage Ott continues to lead with one bad apple, 347 and 69. to see what the track official says, but it looks like from up here he may have crossed that northern chalk line, that inside chalk line. All right, folks, we will have a short intermission after the two classes that we have on the track right now. A short intermission right after the mod four-wheel drives and the limited bro stocks. Yeah, that's what I feared. That's what I feared with Rod Ewing. He's going to hear those two letters no one likes to hear. DQ for the disqualification. Went out of bounds here to the left side. Unlike me, I like to hear DQ because it makes me think I'm going to get some ice cream. Yeah, I obviously like DQ also. I think COVID-19 <laughs> gave me about COVID-20, if not more.
Frosted Frog Coolers. Coolers and tumblers. Frosted Frog proven to be better and just as reliable as, oh, that four-letter cooler company that starts with Y and an I. You know who I'm talking about. Frosted Frog offers many different colors, including camouflage. Many different colors in camo. Get your very own Frosted Frog Cooler here tonight. At the merchandise trailer over there, the souvenir trailer. Got several of those coolers on display over there. Man, they are super cool. I've got one. All the cool people have got a Frosted Frog cooler. All the cool kids. They are really cool. Go down and take a look at them, and they hold ice forever. FrostedFrog.com. If you don't pick one up tonight, you can check them out online at FrostedFrog.com. 2019 points champion right here, Charlie Miller. The Foxy Lady out of Creston, Iowa. 301.56, the mark to beat. On the grandstand side, coming out, Joe Moriando. No green, no glory. Runner-up finish in the points for the last two years. He was our number two tractor in 2019 and 2020. I tell you what, he made a good pass, but something was amiss in that motor. He'd had a slight flutter to it, almost a miss coming down the track. It did not sound 100%. Well, miss or not, Leroy, he just took the lead with that pass. 314.33 feet for Charlie Miller. Give him a round of applause, your new leader. On the grandstand side from Mount Vernon, Missouri. No green, no glory. Joe Moriando finished second in points in 2019, finished second in points in 2020. He would like to move up a spot in 2021. That's not going to be the only tractor we see from Mount Vernon, Missouri tonight. I see a blue one sitting back there. The alter ego. It was to say, uh, Joe is no stranger to that points championship spot. He did win the points championship back in 2017. Got into the chalk. He was on that right break, trying to keep it in bounds. That's two in a row. Yeah. Looked like he had the same exact issues as the ramrod, Joe Rod Ewing, Joe Moriando, out of bounds to the left. We'll wait for that official ruling. Put the front end way high, right out of the gate. It was angling left, coming down the track. Got a little too close, got in the chalk. So, yeah, DQ for him as well. So, DQ for Rod Ewing, the ramrod number two, and also DQ for Joe Moriando, no green, no glory. Oh, yeah. In Missouri tonight, I see a blue one sitting back there, the alter ego. It was to say, uh, Joe Moriando, no green, no glory. Yeah, Charlie Miller's truck, when he went down the track, I could hear just a slight in Missouri tonight. I Miss out of that exhaust. How he went 314 ego. and changed. I'll, I'll say, never uh, know. Joe it just did Oriondo. not sound right. No green, when no he went by. Yeah, Charlie Miller's truck, when he went down the track, I could hear just a slap. In Missouri tonight. And Miss out of that exhaust. How the he went 314 and changed. I'll never know. It just did not sound right. Outlaw points champion. Yeah, Charlie Miller's truck, when he went down the track, I could hear just Got to be 314.33. Three, three, three. Take the lead away from Charlie Miller.
Over on the grandstand side, looking for Jerry Mason out of Marseilles, Illinois. And the Green Mule, beautiful looking John Deere 5010. Had to beat 314.33. Eric Claypool. Uh, it kind of helps me too. I, it's uh, a different view from sitting in the seat. Eric Claypool comes up Eric short. Two ninety eight point five one. Two nine eight point five one. It kind of helps me too. I, a different view from sitting in the seat. Eric Claypool comes up Eric short. Two ninety eight point. We buy a lot of stuff online nowadays, ladies and gentlemen. Why wouldn't you buy something such as? A belt online where you can do it now at offroadbelts.com, whether it's a belt for your vacuum cleaner or your combine for your garden tractor or your oil rig. Offroad Belts has that belt for you. If they don't have it, they'll find it and they'll get it to you. They'll ship it to you in the mail. Offroadbelts.com, proud sponsors of the Outlaw Truck and Tractor Pulling Association. Grandstand side from Marseilles, Illinois, the Green Mule, Jerry Mason. Our leader continues to be one bad apple. Gage Ott, the hired gun tonight on Brian Dex Tractor. That one bad apple was our points champion in 2020, trying to start off the 2021 season the same way. A lot of strong 4-1s here left in the class. Here he comes, Jerry Mason, the Green Mule. John Deere fans, where are you at? Do you think he did it? Needed to go in excess of 347 and change to knock that one bad apple off that top spot. How about 353.69353 and a 69, your new leader, the Green Mule. Jerry Mason, Marseilles, Illinois, takes over that top spot. Dan Kirby, you're up next. We got four of them left over here on our limited pro stocks. Dan Kirby, Tyler Paddock, Casey Lear, and then Colin Lear. Thank you. 